Hello guys, welcome to another part of Web API tutorials. So in this video, we are going to understand what dependency injection is, the different ways to manage dependency injection, and finally, we will implement it in our existing code. So starting with the definition, so in small words, dependency injection is just a design pattern to help us reduce the tightly coupled software components. It basically helps us to reduce the complexity of our software and it does by using a builder object to initialize objects and provide the required dependencies to the object. So we have three different ways to manage dependency injection. The first one is transient. Every time we use transient, it will basically create a new instance of that particular class or the object file. The second one is scope. It will create an instance of the object or the class type once per request and will be shared in a single request. The last one is singleton. It will create the instance for the very first time and then it will be shared throughout the application's lifetime. Alright, let's jump into the code and start coding now. So I am going to take help of interfaces to implement dependency injection in this application. I hope you already know about interfaces. If you don't, it is just like in class, just that instead of having the entire function details, it only has the function signature. So let's show you how we can implement the interface. So let's go into Solution Explorer. We have the repositories layer here. We have a folder called repositories. Let's right click here and add a folder called interfaces. All right, click enter. So the class name is employee repository. The same way I'm going to create an interface for employee repository. And I'm going to name it I employee repository right let's click add and it will help us create the class file so let's change this class to public interface i employee repository let's go into the employee repository class and copy every single function signature so we have to switch back again and again right Oops, we don't have the namespace here. Let's add the using statement. All right. The same way we are going to do it for every single function signature, right? Okay. For the next one. Okay. We are almost there. Are there any more? Yes, this is the last one. Let's copy this and paste it here. All right, give a semicolon. And yeah, we have created the interface. Now let's copy the name. Go back to the employee repository, scroll to the very top. And after this employee repository word, add the name here. Add the using statement. So now the employee repository inherits from the interface I employee repository. All right, let's do it for the services layer as well. Right click, add folder, interfaces, add class, and this will be I employee service, right? Click add. This will create the file, change the class to public interface. All right. Open I employee service. Oops, I guess I had to open this. Again, copy the same for all of them. I assume it would be the same just as the I employee repository. So let's copy the entire thing from here and paste it here. Let's see if this works out. Okay, we have to add the namespace here. Let's copy the name. Go back to employee service. Just like we did for repository layer, the same way we're going to do it here. Add the using statement. So now the employee service inherits from the interface I employee service. Awesome. We don't have any errors. Let's see. We'll quickly build this. Alright, the build has succeeded. 
So now let's implement the dependency injection finally. So if you notice here, we are actually newly instantiating the employee repository every time we are using it in the service lane. That definitely does not come under good practices. So let's go ahead and implement the dependency injection. For that, we need to go in the startup file here. In the API layer, we will find a startup class. Open that. All right. Scroll down and you will find a function called configure services. So let's add the dependency injection for these two files here. Services dot add transient. I hope you remember those three words, right? Transient, scoped and singlator. So there are multiple ways to implement the service lifetime methods. Let's see one of them. So when you open the less than bracket, you will find the four options just like this. So you have to provide the service name here or you can provide just like this and inside the parameters you have to provide these variables. Then there is this way. I normally prefer this way. You have to provide the interface here and the implementation which is the class file here, right? So let's provide it. I employee service. Come on, employee service, right? Let's add the namespace. Let's open and close the brackets. So you see, it has got implemented. Now, same for the repository. I employee repository. Add the namespace, comma, employee repository. Oops. Yeah. So it works, right? We have used transient for service layer and scoped for the repository layer. As I was saying earlier, transient creates new instances every time we you try to use this particular object or the class. So I personally don't prefer add transient. Instead, you can use add scoped or add singleton. Let's use both of them for employee service. Let's use singleton for scope. Let's use repository. Okay. So we have added the dependency injection here. Now let's go ahead and replace the places where we had actually newly instantiated earlier. So I will open the controller class. So instead of using this line, which newly instantiates the employee service every time, we are going to replace this with the newly created interface, right? Let's add the using statement. Now let's open the constructor public employee controller and inside this let's take the same service type i employee service let's rename this to a smaller e all right now use this variable employee service and say is equals to employee service so earlier we were actually newly instantiating the employee service class every time manually. But this time, since we have already mentioned the dependency injection in the startup class, this will automatically get the value from startup and give the value here inside this variable employee service. And we can use it accordingly in all the functions here, right? Let's go ahead and do it for the employee service as well. Same way, we'll remove this. We're going to make this as an interface instead of the class. Open the controller, employee service. Inside the parameter list, copy this. Use the same variable name, but instead change it a bit, right? Open the body, copy this, and let's change the name. That is it. Yes. So now we are using the same repository layer, but instead this dependency is getting resolved from the startup class. Let's go ahead and test it now. I'll run this solution. So we have phase one exception and this is what I wanted you guys to show. 
So let's see the details. Give it a minute and I'll show you the exact details. Yep. So here we have let's what is the net exception? Let's try to understand this. Cannot consume scoped service uh, repositories interfaces from Singlet, right? So this is what I wanted to show you guys. Basically, you cannot use Singleton and Scoped together. If you want to use Scope, you use Scope, or if you want to use Singleton, you use Singleton for all of them, right? So I personally prefer Scope, so I'll change this to add Scope, and hopefully this should run. Let's run the solution again. All right, waiting for it to run. So there you go. It successfully runs. Let's go ahead and test our changes now. I have one endpoint handy here. Actually, I have all of them, but let's only test the first one. Let's quickly do a get. And you have it here, right? You get the changes. So it is working fine. The dependency injection is successfully implemented. In the next video, I'm going to show you the best way to resolve the dependency injection for multiple classes. So right now, when we have a single class in service layer and a single class in repository layer, we can use this way. But what happens if the service layer has around 50 classes and repository layer has around 50 classes? You have to manually write all these 100 lines for these classes, right? So instead, we can actually use a loop to implement the dependency injection automatically. That's a very good way which I have learned recently and I want to share with you as well. So in the next video, we are going to use the dependency injection way for multiple classes. So that is it for this video. If you like this video, please click on the like button. If you want to support us, please click on the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.